Um, a little bit about the requirements now. So this hasn't changed very much. Um, there has been one change here, which I'll, I'll talk about in a moment. So I mentioned before that uh, submitting a, uh, um, your, your application for accreditation involves uh, the submission of a portfolio of evidence and a, a written account. So the written account is called a RAP, a reflective account of professional practice. Um, the three pathways that I mentioned before are on your screen here, and we can see how many words uh, is expected at the three different levels. So at associate fellow, it's 1500, fellow three to three and a half thousand, and senior fellow six to six and a half thousand. Those of you who are familiar with the old scheme will notice that senior fellow has, has been reduced slightly um, uh, because you get that nice sense of doubling then each level doubles from one to the next and also the number of criteria have been reduced um, but we want more space for reflection we want to maintain that space for reflection within the account the reflective account of professional practice uh, is where you claim competence in the criteria we'll talk more about that a little bit later you reflect on what you did, why you did what you did, how effective it was, any, any points for further development. Um, at fellow and senior fellow, that is at least partially structured, structured with a case study. So a case study is where you might um, explore a particular course that you were involved in, um, or it might be your involvement with a, with a SIG, for example, um, uh, and you cover as many of the criteria as, as, as you can within that, and then the remainder of your wrap will cover the, the criteria that you haven't been able to address in the case study. So that's a very typical approach. Um, for senior fellow, you'll notice that two case studies are included. Um, one of those uh, would be uh, related to academic leadership, um, and the other could be uh, also related to that if you wanted, but there's, there's a greater choice uh, there. There's still a requirement for observation. So uh, teaching is the core of the, uh, the, the portfolio. Your, your, competence as a, um, as a as a teacher it, it is teep um, uh, that that t is is the giveaway so um observation records are necessary for each level one of these observations can be conducted by any competent practitioner within your center or, or perhaps uh, even even outside um, as long as they're competent, you might, for example, get someone from an, another institution, like exchange a peer observation. That's perfectly possible with one of the observations. Another one of the observations has to be done by um, a, a TEEP observer, which at the moment is um, an assessor or mentor. But we are looking at uh, ways to, to, to disseminate the observation um, uh, recognition, the recognition of who is um, uh, able to or recognised as giving the, the formal TEEP observation. That we're, that's in hand. And then finally, a reference statement. It's associate fellow, it's one, and fellow senior fellow, there's a requirement for two references. Those are statements from line managers or um, perhaps peers verifying the authenticity of the, uh, the account that you've submitted. Um, yeah, I'll just keep an eye out on the chat just in case there's any questions. Okay, great. Um, so if there are questions about this, we are going to look at that in more detail. You'll find all of this in the handbook, um, and none of that has changed significantly except for the slight reduction in the, the senior fellow word count. These are the main changes to the scheme. So the old criteria, uh, particularly at fellow and senior fellow, there were a number of pages that you needed to, to look at, uh, many criteria on each of those pages to acknowledge and competencies. We've simplified and collated those to four broad areas of practice. So one of these is planning and design. So at associate fellow, that might relate to the way that you plan the, the, the classes that you have, the way that you design the materials for your students. For fellow, it might include how you are um, writing materials for, for use of your colleagues, for example, or it may include um, uh, the way that you plan workshops which are delivered within a SIG or something. For teaching and learning, um, that relates to your practice within the classroom. That's the core area, um, as I mentioned. So that is uh, the same, um, it's the same activities for all of the levels, but there is a slightly different knowledge requirement as, as the, the, the considerations broaden um, outside of your, your classroom as well. Uh, assessment and feedback. 
and finally scholarship and CPD. To some degree, the others will feature in CPD as well, but, but here we're looking at CPD as it relates to um, evaluation of your own practice. So use of observation records, for example, would, would feature within uh, CPD um, or, or delivery of uh, sessions to, to colleagues and so on and so forth. So those are the, that's the main shift. We've, we've taken the, the, those 10 pages of criteria and we've simplified it to one task page for each level and one page of criteria for each level. So it's very much simplified and condensed. You'll notice that there's a values section as well um, when we have a look at the, the criteria and we'll see that those are aligned with the Bali values. So the, the values are um, collaboration, professionalism, development and inclusivity. And we would expect in a submission for those values to feature throughout your account. So knowledge and, and activities, you would hit once, but the values underpin so many different areas of your practice. And just think about all the different ways that collaboration features, for example. Collaboration would feature in your classroom practice. You get students to collaborate with each other um, uh, in support of their learning. You may collaborate with colleagues in the design of certain things or, or working through certain problems and so on and so forth. So it would appear numerous times. Um, there is also the capacity now for fellows to become mentors, uh, but only mentors to associate fellow candidates. So that's a, that's a, a new change um, this time. And that also is to, to recognise that fellows have a lot of experience. They're, they're often the backbone of uh, what happens within their, their centres when they're operating at, at that sort of level. Um, and there's a lot of value in them sharing experience and, and, and knowledge with associate fellow candidates also in their journey towards senior fellow candidates as well. So that's also to help fellows progress towards senior fellows. We've also formalized the mentoring process as well, which uh, we won't spend too much time on today, but you can see in the handbook. Okay, we've had a look at the, um, the pathways. Um, so we're gonna have a look now at exploring the criteria. So we're gonna work in breakout groups now. Um, so spend a little bit of time, you've got 15 minutes for this activity. Uh, so I want you to go into the, the handbook and choose a small selection of the criteria for your chosen pathway. So on the handbook, if you access that on the Padlet, you'll see that in the, in the chat um, before, you'll find the criteria between pages 16 and um, 22. Uh, so page 16 is, is where the associate fellow criteria starts. So if you want to open that handbook now on the Padlet, find the link in the chat. Um, and then uh, uh, find that handbook in the first column. So have a look at those criteria. Let's have a look at what they are. And in your groups, I want you to discuss what they mean. Um, so discuss your interpretations of the criteria. What do they mean in your different context? You're going to be present in your group with um, uh, a number of, uh, okay, there's a product link again. Um, so click on that and you'll find the handbook in the left-hand column. So you're gonna find, when you have your discussion with the people in your group that the, the interpretation of the criteria might be slightly different. It might, it might be um, uh, realized, I suppose, in different ways, depending on who you are, what you teach, who you teach, um, the way that you teach it. Uh, so I want you to think about the meaning of those. Think about also what examples for your practice would address each criteria. And if you were trying to um, show an example of what you do to address that criteria, what would it be? And then also, uh, finally, I want you to think about how does each criterion interrelate with the other criteria? So if you've chosen a, a knowledge criterion in, in your, your group, then how does that knowledge criterion interrelate with one or more of the activities that is also in that uh, set of criteria? How does it interrelate with the values? And bring them together. Try to see the criteria not as separate, but as connected to each other, as linked. The knowledge, values, and activities are linked. So try and spot some of those. Think about how that how that would um, feature in your own um, your own practice. So once you've thought about those, the the meaning of the criteria, examples, the interrelationship, then I want you to add some thoughts and columns uh, co comments rather to your group's column on the Padlet. So you've got access to that Padlet uh, again. Um, and I want you to type comments from your group. You'll see your group number. So I want you to, to add comments from your group onto the, the Padlet there. You might choose to have a scribe 
you might have to, you might choose to, to have different people typing in a range of examples, for example, because they are going to be different um, depending on what your context is. Uh, and if you do have any questions, if there's something that's confusing or something you're not sure about, anything like that, add it to the second column of the Padlet and we'll look at those when we come back together to, um, to, to discuss your thoughts. Okay, so any questions? <laughs>